You know, in recent years, we have seen sort of peaks and troughs when it comes to cooperation between China and the US on the issue of fentanyl. How much political willingness do you see this time around and, and how much does it also come down to, I guess, the logistics of trade on whether they can effectively address this problem? Well, the meeting is taking place after we have had uh, more than 16 months of no cooperation from China on fentanyl. Fentanyl is the world's most potent drug uh, that's killing 300 Americans a day, 110,000 people in the U.S. a year. And so uh, China to disengage from cracking down on the illicit networks uh, in China has been very costly. So at the summit, as you mentioned, that is the expectation that uh, China will um, agree to start cracking down on the illegal flows of fentanyl precursors mostly today uh, in exchange for uh, removing the sanctions on the land. And this is a positive step. Um, it's not a step that will end all fentanyl flows, let alone fentanyl deaths in the United States, but it's certainly important to have some cooperation. How much of that cooperation uh, yet remains to be seen, and I fear that uh, the steps will be limited and bound on China's part. What is the best case scenario, Vanda, there? Because we know that Mexico also has a role to play as well, right? Does this need to be really a trilateral commitment to be effective? Well, absolutely. Um, the flows of fentanyl today essentially are precursors from China to Mexico, where the cartels like Sinaloa and cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion synthesize them into fentanyl and then smuggle them uh, into the United States. Uh, but the cartels and illicit networks, Chinese, Mexican, others, uh, often engage in a wide variety of other illegal uh, economic activities and other illegal ec activities more broadly. So having robust trilateral cooperation would be terrific, as well as having a robust commitment on the part of each country to enforce its rule of law, to enforce its laws. We are very far away from that. Uh, we're really just hoping that uh, the summit will restart some cooperation on the part of China. Does this get around non-state actors, though, and their role that's played in the illicit trade? Well, indeed, the smuggling uh, is uh, perpetrated by entities that are sometimes outright criminal. Uh, other times they are actors in China uh, that are uh, operating both in the legal and illegal economies. Um, some of them, uh, both in China and in Mexico, have protection and ties to government officials. So there is also state dimension to it, although its intensity varies. Um, certainly in a place like Mexico, corruption as well as uh, very limited willingness to take on criminality is very pronounced. In China, it's far more selective. China often acts against criminal groups that threaten the interest uh, of the Chinese government, but at the same time, as many Chinese criminal groups advance interests of the Chinese government, um, such as cracking down on diaspora, uh, being eyes and ears to monitor diaspora, facilitating corruption networks, and then China is reluctant to act against those actors. You talk about the idea that it's not easy politics, right? That it is uh, the ability to tackle every single dimension of economic and political activity in which illegal drugs are involved. How big is this task? And, and I suppose, you know, are the, 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 is the framework already in place to be able to do that? Well, the framework is there. China, um, as a result of US diplomacy in May 2019, uh, publicly scheduled the entire class of fentanyl type drugs. So that means that any kind of production, trade, uh, export requires special permission. Uh, that gives ability to monitor the very vast Chinese chemical, pharmaceutical and agricultural sectors uh, that are whose uh, companies are implicated in the illegal trade. China also scheduled some precursor chemicals that are specific only to fentanyl. There are many precursors that have dual use that are not scheduled. And certainly mounting law enforcement operations against their smuggling, it's tougher. But it's not impossible. And the United States has well demonstrated it across the spring and summer when it was indicting uh, entities in China 
uh, that were smuggling legal non-scheduled substances, but nonetheless knowingly smuggling them to criminal actors, to Mexican cartels, providing recipes how to turn the chemicals into illegal drugs. And China can uh, use those same tools to uh, much more uh, diligently, determinedly act against those actors. Um, I hope this is what the summit will produce. Uh, I fear that whatever China promises might be limited in its expectation of what kind of strategic benefits it will get. China is still hoping that this would produce a uh, reduction uh, on the U.S. part of the economic, technological and defense competition with China. That's not going to happen for the Biden administration. Uh, the containment of China and the strategic competition is the principal axis of foreign policy. And so I expect that down the road, China will get less than what it's hoping for. Um, it will get uh, very likely the, uh, the um, removal of sanctions from the forensic lab. But in my view, China is expecting far more. It won't get that. And so within a few months, we might well be in a state where China again withdraws uh, law enforcement action and law enforcement cooperation.